Hi, everyone. Welcome to the monthly Fedora Council video meeting. I am not Matthew Miller. I am Ben Cotton, the Fedora Program Manager. Uh, this month, we have Peter Robinson, who is the lead for Fedora IoT, talking about Fedora IoT. Um, you know, Peter, why don't you just go ahead and take it away? Thank you, Ben. Um, I'll give a brief overview of myself, um, what I do, and then um, an overview of what Fedora IoT is. Um, where we're going and kind of why. Um, and then from there, we can open it up for any questions that anyone may have. Um, so I'm Peter Robinson. I've been involved in Fedora um, to some degree or another, basically from the outset. Um, I have been involved in a lot of different things throughout the project. Um, over the time, um, I have been on council and previously on the board as well. Um, I have done um, community roles and then um, around five and a half years ago, I started um, officially working on Fedora related things um, as part of release engineering, doing um, what at the time was referred to as secondary architectures. Um, is now referred to as alternate architectures. Um, and then about three and a half years ago, um, my senior vice president at the time, or senior vice president of RHEL at the time, the decent mass, basically gave me the job of investigating um, IoT in the context of the op Linux operating system, so Fedora and related um, distributions, um, but explicitly doing that sort of research um, and development around that in the Fedora community space. Um, so Fedora IoT was basically born out of that remit um, to basically go and investigate um, IoT for Red Hat. Um, so so that, that's a brief overview of me. Um, I've been at Red Hat um, about seven and a half years, if memory serves me correctly, and um, been working towards um, Fedora IoT for about three and a half of, of that. Um, anyway, so Fedora IoT, it's um, fully based on Fedora, fully upstream in Fedora. We don't have any forks. Um, it is an RPM OS tree based um, remix or addition actually now um, of Fedora um, based out using, you know, Atomic and um, CoreOS technologies to produce um, a addition that is focused on IoT and device edge. Um, the term edge and the term IoT are very similar to cloud in that they're very, very, very overloaded terms. Um, are we looking to run on your thermostat? Are we looking to run on tiny little sensors? No, we are not. Um, you basically need to have a system that is um, essentially a Raspberry Pi or larger, so reasonable amounts of RAM able to run a full Linux. Um, distribution. Um, we are in the short term at least just primarily due to the amount of resources um, that are available um, in terms of people and related that are actually actively working on this. Um, we're focused on primarily a gateway style or a um, endpoint style um, Linux device. Um, without a graphical display. Um, so, you know, we're not sort of currently going, looking at sort of display related um, technologies. Um, it has certainly been discussed. Um, it has certainly been, um, it will possibly eventually be on the roadmap, um, but we're nowhere near um, that side of things. Um, so, how does Fedora IoT um, differ from server or cloud or workstation, um, you know, delivery artifacts. Um, 
we only deliver an RPM OS 3 based image. Um, it's relatively minimal, um, nowhere near as minimal as I would like. Um, applications are designed um, and meant to run in containers um, with sort of just enough operating system underneath it to boot the hardware um, and interface with the hardware. Um, we have a focus around security technologies. Um, we have a number of large companies that are actually running um, Fedora IoT in production. Um, and ha um, and we're engaged with customers, partners such as Arm, Lanaro, and various other areas of the ecosystem um, to sort of provide feedback and engagement and support um, in the sort of things we are doing. Um, for example, the Lanaro Ledge or the Lonaro Edge initiative um, uses Fedora IoT as one of their reference platforms. Um, and yeah, so generally um, a small, small OS, um, mostly rolling release, um, RPM OS tree based. Um, where with Fedora 32, we're moving from a, um, initial setup based config. Um, so when you first boot, it would um, typically prompt you to create a um, username and various other bits and pieces so that you can log in and continue. Um, while that's very good from a developer point of view because it will run up and allow you to um, provision, it's no good for a um, widely like, so we have customers that are running hundreds um, and looking at running tens of thousands of instances. Um, and obviously you want to be able to auto provision that. Um, so yes. Um, and so we're moving to an ignition based um, provisioning system. Um, and there's a web interface for that. So you can sort of DD out an image for say the Raspberry Pi and um, go to provision.fedoraproject.org. Um, you will need to have a wired network connection currently um, because we don't have the ability to deal with wireless um, interface config locally. Um, and um, anyway, you can then sort of claim the device. Um, the service is relatively new. It is still under sort of development, um, still needs some enhancements. Um, so if people are interested in IoT and are interested and capable of doing um, Python Django, I believe it is written in, um, based web development, um, certainly reach out to us um, because um, we're doing some quite cool and interesting bits and pieces there. Um, and yes, that is um, a general overview of it. Thanks, Peter. Um, we'll open up the, the meeting to questions from anyone. Just jump in and unmute yourself and shout your question out or put it in the chat if you can't. Uh, hey, this is James Cassell. Um, my question is, what's the biggest difference between IoT and Fedora Core OS? Um, so Fedora Core OS is designed or, or has a focus of being a Kubernetes-based distribution. Um, Fedora IoT um, isn't focused on that. Um, so we deal with a lot of things that you wouldn't get. Um, so you wouldn't run a Kubernetes distribution uh, typically over, say, a wireless WAN link or, you know, low bandwidth. Um, Kubernetes, um, yeah, it's designed also because of Kubernetes to be sort of um, in groups of machines, so cluster-based, um, where a lot of the Fedora IoT and device edge use cases are single use um, use cases, so designed uh, not to run in clusters and designed not necessarily to use something like, I think it's Airship, um, to do sort of cluster-based reboots um, and movement of workloads and, and, and things like that. So basically uh, Core OS is very much focused on um, primarily being a um, 
an OS in which to run Kubernetes on top of, uh, we are not. Ben, were you talking? Because I can't hear you. Oh, you think I'm supposed to unmute? Is that important? <laughs> Anyone else have questions? <laughs> I'll throw one out. Um, can you talk a little bit about like the release streams and upgrades process? Because one of the you know big issues with IoT devices in general is they ship with some software and then they never get security updates and then everything is terrible. So how do we <laughs> deal with that in Fedora IoT? Um, so from a release stream point of view, we have um, three main streams. Um, we have the stable stream, which is currently Fedora 31. Uh, we have Devel Stream, which is currently 32, um, and we have Rawhide, which is constantly rolling against um, the main Fedora Rawhide. Um, the stable stream will be switched um, to Fedora 32 on release day, um, and basically you will be actively upgraded um, through to that. Um, there's a number of reasons for that. Um, one, basically, it's um, primarily a rolling release, um, and two, we just really don't have enough people to um, maintain multiple streams. Uh, so that leads into the another question I had written down is how how can people contribute to Fedora IoT if they're you know Fedora contributors who want to join in and help out? Um, so we have most. Um, we have all the usual um, Fedora means of contribution. We have um, IoT mailing list, um, IoT IRC channel, which is pound Fedora hyphen IoT. Uh, we have a PAGA instance with a number of um, Git repos um, that are primarily used around um, docs and the release engineering side of things. Um, and we also have a Fedora-IoT um, GitHub page where we host um, a few of the other more general uh, projects around that. So um, the provisioning system, which is um, the project name is Zaziri, um, is based there um, along with um, some of the security related stuff. Um, Greenboot, which is a project um, around upgrade and rollback. So if a um, device, uh, you can set up a bunch of health checks and once you upgrade and reboot a device, um, if it can't connect to say the network and the update system um, and various other or C bits of hardware that are specified within the health check um, framework, um, it will roll back um, to the previous version. Um, so, so there's a number of different ways to get involved. Um, the mailing list and the IRC channel are probably the two uh, traditional ways that um, most people actively involved in Fedora will know how to get involved. So I know you mentioned earlier um, Ignition uh, required some Django experience, is that right? Um, what other sort of technical areas uh, or non-technical areas are you really looking for contributions for from right now? Um, so some of the, I wouldn't call them non-technical, um, but more easy to get involved area um, is documentation and testing is always um, useful. Um, we support currently a small amount of hardware um, with Fedora 32. Um, the supported hardware is widening out um, quite a bit there um, with addition of devices um, from Pine64 and a couple of other companies, which I will be able to talk about shortly. Um, so documentation, um, testing um, on the technical um, or the more um, engineering development side of things. Um, we have uh, Zaziri, which I mentioned, which is the web-based provisioning system. Um, and there'll be some other functionality coming to that. Um, we have a handful of sort of um, issues open where we track um, functionality 
Um, I need to create a bunch more there, um, but there's, you know, a bunch of bits and pieces there which um, are relatively straightforward um, to get started with um, if you're um, uh, aware of sort of Python and, and Django based development. Um, and then we have lower down related stuff. We've got quite a big focus on um, TPM2 related stuff. Um, so, and things that utilize the TPM such as integrity measurement um, and attestation related stuff. And so there's a bunch of work that's being done there. Um, and um, a whole bunch of other um, sort of feature and enhancement related stuff um, that if people are interested in, um, I, I am sure that there are a lot of other ideas that aren't exactly coming to my, um, direct to my mind at the moment. Right. Uh, any questions from anyone else? I'll throw another softball your way, Peter. How many IoT devices do you have sitting somewhere in your house right now, whether you're using them or not? Oh, um, I would say in the hundreds. And in actual fact, um, in the coming, well, it was due to be in the coming weeks. Um, I think probably due to the current um, pandemic at the moment, it will be sometime in the coming months. Um, I am due to move house. Um, and I was actually planning on documenting all the devices um, in a series of blog posts when I moved. But I, I would say, um, you know, from, you know, full on ARM devices, so like the Pine 64 um, and Raspberry Pi 4 and similar related devices through to um, devices such as um, this device, which is Zephyr capable, so much more RTOS and smaller and can be run on a battery. Um, yeah, well and truly tr tr into the hundreds. So how much of the Fedora IoT work is done sort of on Fedora IoT itself versus on, you know, component packages or upstream to like, you know, make sure things work right on ARM hardware, for example? Um, so there's a lot of testing in Fedora and Fedora IoT directly around the ARM related stuff, um, but also x86 related stuff. Um, there is, I do a lot of contribution into other upstream communities. Um, so U-Boot, for example, for device enablement. Um, and a lot of that is sort of more done in my own time um, and as part of the Fedora ARM effort. But um, I'm directly involved in a bunch of upstream standardization um, organizations as part of my job at Red Hat and as part of my remit there. Um, so, and, um, you know, so I mentioned Lenaro and so Lenaro actively uses and, and contributes to Fedora IoT. Um, and there are some other sort of ecosystem um, and standardization bodies that um, I participate in as well. So um, it's a combination, um, like right across the ecosystem, in my opinion. All right, great. Um, any other last chance for questions from anyone else in the audience? I think we may have a question coming up, but we can't hear them. I, I got a question. I'm not on the council, but I'm, uh, I'm here for the meeting. Um, Please. Whatever Please. happened to uh, the Exxon Mobil and Fedora deal? Can we talk about that? Um, so ExxonMobil is actively using Fedora IoT. Um, I wouldn't call it a deal per se. That they are a um, you know a company like a number of other companies that are using Fedora IoT. Um, we're lucky in that they quite happily um, ha have openly spoken about um, their use of Fedora IoT in a number of forums. 
So Okay, just curious. I, I remember uh, hearing it flock. Um, is, is there any way that uh, the community uh, the community can help with Exxon's efforts or, or is that even uh, something that they've requested or need or uh, I mean, help in their efforts is an interesting um, I mean, they are actively following along the discussion um, that happen in the community. Um, they don't tend to speak up in that space a huge amount, although they they um, there are certainly individuals there that um, sort of actively sort of uh, participate in that um, sort of space. Um, community directly working with Exxon is not really something um, that's sort of easy to do. Um, but yeah, no, they they at the moment basically use um, pretty vanilla off the shelf Fedora IoT. Um, they layer a few packages on for specific um, low level bits and pieces that they need, um, and they run a lot of stuff in containers um, across a, a bunch of different use cases. Thanks, Peter. Anyone else? This is open questions. You don't have to be a, a council member to chime in with questions for Peter. In fact, we encourage people who aren't council members to give him the business. All right, well, it sounds like we've reached the end of questions. Peter, do you have any last comments you want to make? Um, no, um, obviously, uh, test and feedback. Um, feel free to reach out to me um, if you have any other questions or queries um, around um, Fedora IoT or any suggestions. All right, thanks, Peter, and thanks to everyone who joined in and uh, participated. Uh, we Fedora Council does this every month with different guests, uh, as suggested by members of the community. So if you go to the Fedora Wiki, the council slash video meetings page has a list of the upcoming meetings and a place where you can submit ideas for people we should be talking to. And with that, uh, everyone have a great day, and we'll talk to you next month. Thank you, Ben.